Welcome to the MFR Coaches Podcast, where we talk about how you can create a six-figure MFR practice. I'm your host, Heather Hommel. Not only have I been practicing MFR for 11 years, I'm also a life and business coach, especially for MFR therapists. My goal is for you to understand how to get fully booked, how to talk to your clients, and how to make sure they understand what's possible for them with MFR treatment. I'm here to help you stop under earning, overworking, and burning out. I'll lend support so you can create the MFR practice you've always wanted. Learn how you can do it too, even if you live in a tiny town, and even if you're just starting out, and even if you've ran your practice for years. Let's go. This episode is brought to you by the MFR Coaches Group Coaching Program, where I coach and support you to create a six-figure MFR practice. You've already taken three MFR seminars or more, and you are ready to make more money as an MFR therapist. You love myofascial release, and you know it's the modality that gets people the results they are seeking to get out of pain and get back to active lifestyles. Your clients aren't rebooking. It's been a struggle to get or to stay fully booked. You aren't sure how to talk to your clients or how to overcome their objections. Maybe you've been a therapist for a long time, and you're starting to notice burnout creeping in. You catch yourself thinking, I'm going to shut this down once my lease is up. Or worse, you're searching ads looking for a better match for something easier and more guaranteed so that you can bring in more money to support yourself and your family. I want you to know you're not alone. This program was designed especially for you. In order to sell MFR, in order to set a proper rate, in order to get fully booked, you need to understand not only how to sell MFR and how to talk about MFR, but you need to have a deep understanding of how your mind is working, how you think and how it affects every decision you make. In the MFR coaches group coaching program, we look at how you are the person that's in your own way. I teach you a simple tool that allows you to be aware of this so you can reach your goals quicker and with more ease. And after all, without awareness, there is no choice. You also get practical guidance to help you raise your rate so you stop under earning right away. I teach you how to talk about and how to sell MFR so your clients come back for more MFR, which allows them to get even deeper and better results than those clients who just don't get it and decide to stop before they've ever gotten started. Become the therapist that is your best referral source and get fully booked. Join the next round of group coaching with early enrollment. April group coaching early enrollment starts this week, February 22nd, 23rd, and 24th only. As part of early enrollment, you get a lot of special bonuses. You get a payment plan if you want. You get to start using the course right away, which gives you double the time with it than someone that enrolls during open enrollment. Plus, you get three bonus group coaching calls ahead of group coaching even starting. So you get to start right away with the course and extra coaching. And for those of you who decide to pay in full, I'm hosting a very special VIP in-person experience in Richmond, Virginia on April 20th. So get in-person time with me and get coached for two hours with me and whoever else decides to join the VIP experience. Be ready. Be on my wait list. I'm only taking 20 people total for April group coaching, including during this early enrollment period. So be one of them. All right, now let's get to the show. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the MFR Coaches Podcast. I'm your host, as always, the MFR Coach, Heather Hamel. Wouldn't it be so funny if one day I introduced myself as somebody else and I guess like, what podcast am I on? <laughs> Totally oh my gosh. I'm just being fun and silly because I have one of my favorite clients on today, Donna Height. She has coached with me for a while. She was one of my OGs back in the day. And she just completed a round of group coaching with me. And we want to talk all about her experience and all that stuff. So Donna, welcome to the program. Tell us the name of your business and where you practice and what's happening. The name of my business is Trinity Myofascial Release, and I am in Austin, Texas. I am actually actively in my second year of business as an MFR only practitioner. Amazing. Yes. That's so cool. Congratulations. So thank you. Everybody wants to know what has your journey been like? Um, my journey <laughs> with coaching only or with opening my business? With opening your business, yeah. 
So I went to massage school with the purpose of doing MFR. I had been an MFR client for about a decade at that point. Okay. Um, and I went through different stages of being an active client with going every single week for about mm-hmm. three years because I was a chronic pain surfer. Um, and then I got into maintenance and then I kind of dropped off for a little bit and then I came back. Anyway, I'm a huge believer in what MFR can do for someone. So I went to massage school with my only purpose of being an MFR practitioner. I didn't want to mess around with Swedish. So anyway, um, I kind of lo- <laughs> I like I love that part of your story because it's like it was so intentional, right? You're like, yeah, I understand what's possible. Like you got yourself out of your hurt locker to the point where you were like physically able to then become a bodywork therapist. Like, what's that kind of like for you to know that that's that's the part of your story? Like, if the injured yeah. you knew that's what you were going to end up doing, like. And especially doing it at the age of, I think when I started massage school, I was 48. Mm. So, so to yeah. be literally the oldest person in my class. Yeah. And I was... But you look like you're 25, so... Oh, shut up, whatever. Um. So, and then like, but it was funny because like within like the first month of school, mm-hmm. everyone called me the MFR person because everyone knew, I made it not a secret. I am here for MFR and that is literally it. And yeah. even like the one or two days that we talked about MFR in class, like the teacher would say something and then everybody would look at me like, was that right? <laughs> and you're like, no. I'd be like, no, she doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> But you guys should all come learn from me. Also. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's all good. I'm here for you. Oh, so yeah. So I mean, it was, you know, and I learned that I could take my state test mm. before I graduated school. So like I was, I was on the fast track. I was doing everything that I could to be done and ready to open my mm. MFR practice. Um, I actually took my first MFR vacation series three months before I graduated um, massage school. I took my test, my state test, two months before I graduated. So I was ready to go. And like at that seminar, I saw your book. Oh, okay. And I was like, what? This woman talks to you about opening an MFR only business? Let me have that book. So I it, that day I bought the book. I bought the actual Kindle version so that mm. I could have it with me on my phone. <laughs> I was like, what? And then I found your podcast. I was like, oh, yes. That's hilarious. Like, she's going to talk to me about things. <laughs> so I yeah, can't I stop was, talking. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was a literal Heather fan, like before anybody knew you actually existed. But <laughs> Oh my gosh. I know. I'm like, when did I start doing this? Like, it seems like it was like yesterday. And then for us to be like, oh, it was like over two years ago now. Like, whoa. Girl, I know. Do you even realize you've been in business that long? <laughs> I don't. I think sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm like, is this my life? Like, is, is this what I do all day? Is this safe? Like, is this, you know, cause when I closed my business, it was the scariest moment of my life. Cause I like nothing was wrong with it when I closed it. And it was like, just this very intentional choice of like, I'm going to go do this thing. I'm going to help MFR leveling up. I'm leveling up. I'm just moving on. (laughs) Yeah. There was a lot of like, who do you think you are? And also like, yeah, I can do this right at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I also love it how you, I mean, you've kind of cornered the situation. Like you are the MFR coach. Like anybody else comes along and tries to do this. <laughs> yeah, they can't like, use that name. I can't, yeah, they can't use that name at all. <laughs> You're like, I have that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I was sitting in bed. Like I was just like on my computer. I can't remember what exactly I was doing when I came up. I was like, I'm the MFR coach. And my husband's like, okay, (laughs) sounds like this is going to be expensive. (laughs) Yeah. What the hell is going on? (laughs) Yes. Yes. Okay, dear. Whatever you like. (laughs) Exactly. Okay. So you were finishing up massage school, going to Mm -hmm. your first seminars, getting the training. Mm -hmm. You saw Mm -hmm. my book, you bought my book, bought both versions of it. I should have made a hardcover too. And then you started (laughs) listening to the podcast and then you you reached out was back in the old days when I did like one-on-ones. Yeah. I think I, I mean, I started one-on-one coaching with you. We would need to look at that, but I, I think I I started with you like within the first couple of months of me opening my business. Mm -hmm. I think it was like October of 2021. Yeah. And I opened, I opened the business in July of 2021. Yeah. 
So it might have even been like September, right? Because it was right before I started yeah. my first group coaching. So you got to be a part of that. Yeah. I just because you were one on one. I swear we started in like August or September. Because I we was might like, have, it might have been new. August or September. Okay. I was yeah. brand new. <laughs> yeah. And you were and one I, of my like last one on one clients because I was like, I was like transitioning right yeah. at that point. Yeah. 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 And I was like heartbroken because we had our little one-on-one, what could Mm -hmm. happen if you're a client of mine. And Mm -hmm. I was like all about, will you take payments? (laughs) And I was like awkward because I, yes, (laughs) yeah, I remember this. I'm so glad we're talking about this because, so I'm going to tell you my version of it. And then I want you to tell your version of it. Yeah. So Donna and I were talking and like, we get to the point where I'm like, okay, it's going to be $3,000 for one-on-one, by the way, it used to be free to work on, work with me, basically (laughs) one-on-one. True. (laughs) And she was like, oh, I don't have that money. Will you take payments? And I was like, yes, I will. And then I was thinking it would be like a thousand dollars a month. And Donna was like, I can pay you like a couple hundred dollars or whatever. And then I was three like, to five. I was like three to five. I could do. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I didn't know what to do, honestly. And I, and so I was like, I'm gonna have to think about that. Right. And then like, I went home, which means I turned the zoom off and went, I work from home. And I was like <laughs> thinking about this, you know, and I was like, I don't think this is in her best interest for me to like, it's not in my best interest either. Right. Because I would like give you all of the coaching and then you would have to be paying me for like a yeah. year. Right. Yeah. And so I came, we like had another meeting and I said to you, mm-hmm. I can't take those payments. What do you want to do? Tell us what happened. <laughs> so <laughs> you actually agreed to do payments and I was like, Oh, okay, that's right. Cool. And then I took it back. You t- yeah, <laughs> you did. And then, so I was like, okay, cool. So my husband knew that I was going through trying to get you as to try to be a client of yours mm-hmm. um, or a coaching participant or whatever, a student, a student. So I walked out and told him, I was like, okay, I just got off the zoom with Heather and she's going to take payments. I'm so excited. Cause I'm actually going to get to do it. Blah, 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 blah. And then you and I got on a zoom the next day and you're like, yeah, I actually can't do that. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> My entire body like shut down. I was like, oh, okay. And yeah. I was totally cool with you on the zoom. I was like, I completely understand. And I did. That yeah. was the thing. Like I got it. I understood. Because I think my my thought prop, what I said to you was like, I would love to do that. Like, I'm not a creditor. Like, I'm not a yeah. credit card company, right? Like, yeah. I don't have a way to accept payments like that. Yeah. 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 Or even follow through if you decide not to pay me, right? Like, I didn't have a way to do that. Exactly. And I was yeah. like, you know, I totally got it. And I was like, in addition to that, I was totally fucking proud of you for actually stating what you needed. Uh-huh. Because I was like, yes, girlfriend, thank you for saying that. However, I was like falling apart on the inside. So like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I literally went outside, went to the swimming pool. I put my swimming suit on, went to the swimming pool, got under the water and screamed as loud as I could. <laughs> <laughs> it came up bawling. My mm-hmm. husband's looking at me like, what the hell is going on? And I'm like, Heather just told me she couldn't take my payments. Now I don't know what I'm going to do. Blah blah. I'm going to fail at business. Like I was literally like meltdown city. It was horrible. Yeah. It was yeah. wretched. Little did I know that in the background, my husband and my mother-in-law were looking at trying to buy my, my like my dream car, which is a mm. 1972 Corvette Stingray. If anybody wants to send me a present. Anyway. Anybody out there? Anyone. Do, do you want to <laughs> give your address? <laughs> Just find me. Anyway, little did I know that they were working on doing that for my birthday. And when I had a complete meltdown over coaching, they were like, we'll give you coaching instead. So he comes in like a couple of days later and he was like, go buy your coaching. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I can't. I don't have the money. Like, I don't, I don't have the money. And he was like, just go buy your coaching. Me and mom have it covered. And I was like, what the hell? I can't believe you picked coaching with me over a stingray. Like what? Look, what does even no, happen right now? No, because I knew you were that. I knew you were my answer. I knew you were my answer. I just knew it in my heart that you were my answer. So I was like, I have to do this. And I was like, I'm a little bummed. I'm not going to have a Corvette degree. Yeah, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> that'll, that'll be that'll be there. That'll be there. Like right. Like I need my. And that was his thing. He was like, Go get the coaching, and then you can buy the damn Stingray. You're on your Ooh, on your own. That's really powerful, right? Right. And so I was like, oh shit, <laughs> he just dropped that on me. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'm good. So I signed up for coaching. I was so, so excited when I got to email you and say, girl, 
I'm, I'm here. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that we're talking about this because my experience of that was like, I suck. I should have known what, what the boundary was for these payments. Like I should have known all this ahead of time. Like it's not very professional, you know, like people are going to find out that I suck, you know, like all these <laughs> stories in my mind, but also at the same time, I knew that if I would have accepted yeah. payments like that, like I could have felt resentful. Like it wouldn't, mm-hmm. like, I would have always been like, I think having anxiety about like the yeah. payment and I didn't want to, I don't want to mm-hmm. have any of that garbage in my coaching. Right. Absolutely. Like, and I get that. I think that's the other reason why I was just so proud of you because I've done the same thing. Like what I, cause I'm a Reiki master on the side. I do that. Mm-hmm. I teach people to be mm-hmm. Reiki masters as well. So I get it. Right. Like I do payment plans that are the simplest, most easiest payment plan on the face of the planet. And I still get people asking me if I can do lower payments mm-hmm. and shit like that. So I get it. Like, it's not Okay. So like, and I was doing the same thing to you and didn't even realize it. Mm, oh, right. Wow. Like the, I all the lessons, right? Like when we show up in our power yeah. and we ask for really what we want, it's okay to do that. Like, I feel like it seems so dangerous. And I've been talking about like danger in our businesses and danger in our bodies, like a lot lately, because that danger that we perceive yeah. keeps us from actually creating the safety and actually creating these huge results for people that mm-hmm. like, look at us. We both had these amazing growth opportunities just mm-hmm. for showing up in our power and like asking for what we want. But it's scary as hell, isn't it? Like when you yeah. take that first step and put your foot down on that grounding of I'm actually stating what I need within my boundaries. And it is scary as hell because you're like, everybody's going to run. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have any clients. Yeah. 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 Everybody is going to leave me. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. I'm actually stating what I need and it's scary as hell because we're not taught. To and do that. when you think you're new, right. When you have this mm-hmm. like idea of yourself as being new, which I think is, it can seem very benign, but it's very dangerous thought to have about yourself. Like, yeah, you do accept clients that you wouldn't normally take, or you, you know, you offer things that don't actually feel good to yourself. So I think it's really important to not consider yourself new ever, like just mm-hmm. consider yourself learning yeah. and to as quickly as possible, figure out how to really understand your boundaries and what you want and what the results you want for your clients. Because I've had other people say, like, ask for discounts too, or ask. I think another thing is, is like, it just being in their best interest. Like some of the decisions that I make are, are in the best interest of my clients, right? Like yeah. When I went to group coaching from one-on-one, like I made a decision there, like it was actually better for people to be in the group than to do one-on-one. And it was better Mm -hmm. for me for the goals that I had too, but like ultimately better for the clients to be in community and to grow together and to Mm -hmm. see everybody else's struggles so people can stop feeling so alone and so like weird Mm -hmm. about everything that goes on in an MFR business. So exactly. I mean, I do the same thing when I'm doing, when I'm working with Reiki clients again, you know, when I'm Mm -hmm. with students, like I prefer them to be in a group of people because having more bouncing off of all of those things, especially Mm -hmm. in all the energies too, just in the mesh of grossness, right? You learn Mm -hmm. more in that big pot of shit instead of yeah. just one on one with somebody you're just mm-hmm. getting the exact same information from just between those two people so mm-hmm. a group setting is way awesomer which i got to do with you i got to do both with you right mm-hmm. yeah so, i mean i did coaching with you on one on one and then you were starting your very first group at the end of my one on one coaching mm-hmm. so i went into your first group coaching which was amazing so <laughs> yeah it was fun. it was fun like You've seen me then like my first one. And then you just completed group coaching this last round. So that was my Uh fifth group. Like what was the difference or what was the experience like? Mainly like you're more in your power with how Mm. you say things. In the beginning, it was like when you were going to give somebody some truth about their self, (laughs) you would kind of meagerly do it. And now Mm -hmm. you just like plop it down. And it's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like here's your diaper full of shit and I'm going to show it. like here it is <laughs> right? like, let me just drop okay. this for you so that yeah. you can but unpack. not in a mean way right like <laughs> no. some people are like is Heather mean it's like I'm no. not mean but I like don't like I'm not here to like coddle anyone or to like create you feeling good about yourself like no, you've got to figure out how you can create that for yourself yeah. But the way I see you and I explain you to people is like, 
you're the grandmother that will make cookies for you, but will also snatch you bald when you do something wrong. And that is the <laughs> best kind of grandmother. I love the it. The one that you know has your back and is probably going to help you buy your first car mm. and walk you through life. But if you mess up, she's going to show you the mirror. And I mm. appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I think that's loving support and loving sending you into the world. And I think that's just something that a lot of people haven't had in life. So yeah. even better to have a life coach to help you with that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's so fun. Okay. <laughs> I re- I'm going to receive that. You it's receive very... it, girl. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of information to get. Okay. It's good. Yeah. I like it. I'm here for it. <laughs> so funny. Okay. So tell everybody like what's happened for you in your business. Like, you know, what else is really cool is like, you've almost not ever had coaching for your business. You know what I mean? Like your mm-hmm. business was open for a few short months and then you had coaching exposure and now yeah. you've had it again, like a year later. So mm-hmm. what's been, what do you think the results of that are? I realized about three months after the first group that I was in ended that I was not fully, I put too much pressure on you in my mind to create the result, oh, okay. to create yeah. the result and to fix yeah. it, to fix me and to tell me what to do mm. and to make my business succeed. Right. Mm-hmm. It literally did not click with me that it was in my own mind and it was my own thinking that was giving me the results that I wasn't getting, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? Because I mean, I'm looking at my numbers right now. My first year of business, I made $6,500 for an entire year. Okay. So is that like... That's about half a year. Like, Because I started in July. Yeah, that's half a year. July, but still half a year of income was like $6,500. Okay. And you were working hard, right? Like... I was working my ass off. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And I was taking discounts and doing shit for people for free because I thought it would make them come back. And mm, like I was doing pleasing. all kinds of, yeah. And my rate was what I was told by my previous MFR person. Mm-hmm. She told me what I should bill at because I was a beginner. That's mm, not even a thing. <laughs> no, it's not even a thing. <laughs> No. So I was billing at something that was like what she thought I should bill at because that's what she said and not what my facts were based on. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, the coaching was like, I was just expecting you to completely just tell me what to do and I was going to do it. And then I was going to get booked. Mm -hmm. Which I do tell you guys quite a bit of things to do, but you absolutely you have to decide, like you have to figure out in your own brain, like what's mm-hmm. keeping you from taking those actions. Right. Cause I can just like tell you guys, till you're blue in the face, get a Squarespace website, get a bank account, mm-hmm. set your rate, right. Like get an office space. And like, mm-hmm. there will always be people that don't do that. And then at the last day of coaching, they're like, which, where do, which website should I get? <laughs> what yeah, should I exactly. have been doing this entire day? Which, and that's the thing, like I had all that, like I came in gangbusters. Mm -hmm. I had my website. I had a bank. I had all the things. And Mm -hmm. like, when you were like, what would it feel like if you made over a hundred grand? I'm like, done, not a problem. Mm -hmm. Like, like, that's what I want. Tell me how to get it. Coming from my past jobs. Like I was making more than that. So yeah, let's have it. Bring it on in. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Give me the money. Show me the money. I don't have a problem with making more money than that. My problem was getting people in the door. And I didn't realize even after my one-on-one coaching and the first group coaching that I did, I did not really check in and listen to the fact that it had everything to do with my thoughts about everything, Hmm. right? And so I had a little bit of hatred for a couple of months after that first group coaching because I was like, I'm not doing as good as I wanted to do. Yeah. And as I thought I should do right after the coaching and all that kind of stuff. And then I sat down and I reread your book, re-listened to a bunch of podcasts. And I was like, Oh my God, Donna, like really pull your head straight out of your ass and let's get some stuff done. Like, I was like, what is going on with me? So I started doing thought downloads. I started doing the models and I started Mm -hmm. actually doing all that. My business picked up. Hey, look at that. And kind of fast, right? Like it was like cause effect. Yeah. Yeah. Like it actually started like just kind of gangbusters. And then I was like, okay, I need to go back to Heather and actually now really get myself and actually pay attention to the group coaching and actually be there as part of... Instead of just going through the motions. Yeah. Because I think people think they can just pay the money. Yeah. And it's going to fix it. And like, that's it. 
okay, I bought this program. Now Mm -hmm. everything is fixed, but yeah, like you can even, you can pay the money and you can show up. But like, if you aren't there, Mm -hmm. if you're not being coachable, if you're not getting coaching from every single person that's getting coached, like you're not Mm -hmm. picking up the coaching, you're literally just throwing away the money. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you're getting a nice tax deductible, but (laughs) yeah, but I mean, like, I'd just rather have the money or have the result of doing the work. Right. So I love how you said like, oh, once I finally realize that I I actually have to do the thought work, I actually have to do the work in order to get the result. I love that you went back because I think a lot of people would just stay in that like entitled kind of energy. Like I'm entitled to this result because I paid this Mm -hmm. money and I'm here and like, Mm -hmm. why don't I have this? And like, or also like kind of be victim-y or like, I yeah. just, I don't understand and I can't figure it out. And this now is that's so where I was. Me. I was absolutely yeah. in the victim-ish. And I was also in the Heather was supposed to be my savior. Mm. Like Heather was supposed to fix everything that was yeah. broken. <laughs> yeah. And like I had a few months. And then of course my good friend, Sarah Martin, she's been going to coaching with you for like a really long time. And so mm-hmm. having conversations with her and really made me realize well, I screwed the pooch on that. Like I did not check in. I didn't check in. I didn't lean into the situation. I didn't do what I was actually there to do. And that was work on myself. Mm-hmm. And I should have done, like, I, I didn't do that. And so mm-hmm. I was like, I need another round so that I can actually lean in. And it's, and the money is also not a gift. I'm paying for it this time. Right. Ooh. And I think the experience of like getting um, resourceful and paying for it for yourself is very important. Oh, it's, it was huge. It was huge. Yeah. Like when I walked in and told my husband, I was like, I'm doing another round. Like I actually didn't even tell him. I told him three months in. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I didn't tell you. I'm doing another round of coaching with Heather. And he was like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah. And I didn't have to approve that with you either because it's my business decision. So (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So it was just funny because I was like, I was just a different person with this round of coaching because I actually leaned in and I listened to every single thing that every single person had to say. Mm -hmm. And then I went back and did a thought dump usually about what all of their coaching brought up for me. Like I'm not a huge person with getting coached in the group setting. Yeah. But I literally love listening to everyone else's coaching because it makes me have a moment of, oh shit, I do that too. Or how would I handle that? Or how would, you know, so I like going through it that way. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I don't think that the only way to get value out of it is to get Mm -hmm. coached every week. I think it's, I mean, it's great for people that take advantage of that and they get coached every week, but there's, I'm kind of the same way. Like I paid $25,000 for the mastermind that I'm in Mm -hmm. and it's once a week for one hour and there are almost 200 people in it. Right. So like the chances of you getting coached even one time is like, it's kind of slim, right? (laughs) I just got coached for the very first time and we're in month six and in the, in the big group, but I got coached when I needed it. And the rest of the time, I just decided that everybody else's coaching was for me. I listened to the replays, like, and I took all the coaching in the same way. And I'm changed as a person, right? Every time I like listen to someone else's coaching, but I just want to point out that like, you don't have to get coached every week. You don't even have to go to both of the coaching calls, right? It's like, this is just the luxury of having a small group. And Mm -hmm. I like, I can pay this much attention and this much time to the group. It's like, sure, I'll do two calls a week. That's fine. Well, Mm -hmm. what do you guys need, right? Let me know what you need and I'm going to show up. So you don't even have to go to both of those. Yeah. yeah, but listen to them afterwards. Like if you yeah. miss a call, make the appointment with yourself, whatever day of the week you have the time to sit mm-hmm. and listen to it because it doesn't matter. Like listen to every single person's situation that they're bringing and listen to how you, Heather, how you respond to them and the things that you say to them because I guarantee you, you're going to find yourself in that situation, either running your business or dealing with a client or dealing with life and being a business owner. You're Mm going to have an experience like that at some point. So draw from it, pull from it and lean in. Yeah. And then when the experience does come up, if it's one you haven't had before, like you're not shocked by it. You're like, oh, wow. Yeah. I I remember this from Heather's thing and I probably have a thought dump that I did on it. Let me go back and look at that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. That's so funny. You know, all right. So, so you made 6,500 in that first six months and that's like, you know, you went through the motions of coaching. Yeah, I I really did. Yeah. I mean, you took (laughs) loading and then you did my early enrollment. So you've been back in my world since August. So you really had like six months of coaching. Mm -hmm. during my three month container, like three months Mm -hmm. of live coaching, but you had extra time with the program. Mm -hmm. So tell me what, like, 
this six months has looked like. <laughs> this six month has been very much different. Like leaning in and actually realizing that I have control over the situation. It's it's mm-hmm. actually me running the business. It's me controlling my outcome, not you. Like you're giving me tools and all of the, you know, the extra coaching and stuff that we get in the group from everybody that you bring in. But it's just actually leaning in and being like, okay, this is actually, this is my business. It's up to me to get my shit straight and get out of my own damn way and actually just do the work, right? And it's it's really weird because in the shamanic world that I hang out in with my Reiki and stuff mm-hmm. like that, like you do shadow work, you know, mm-hmm. to really get through all your trauma and that kind of stuff. I'm like, this is my business shadow work is what I'm doing mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I am trying, I've got to do my business shadow work. And that has to do everything with just digging down deep and getting through what I think about one, my ability to be an MFR therapist, how I interact with clients and getting them rebooked. And because that's where I always be like, I get all cringy mm-hmm. about rebooking someone. <laughs> I know it's, isn't it funny that like the cringiest thing for most MFR therapists is like actually offering the help that we have to offer. Yeah. Yeah. And I point that out and then people are like, why is that cringy to me? Right? Like, why Uh is that cringy? Like, this is the thing that we offer so that we can get them the results that they're coming to us for. They, and they want us to offer it to them. Yeah. It's not really the rebooking. I'm cool. Like if you want to be on my books for the next eight months, I'm good with it. My deal is when somebody says, how often should I come back? Mm -hmm. As often as you can. That's when I literally crap my pants. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because I'm like... (laughs) Why do you think that? Like, what is your thought about that? Like, Well, I don't do it anymore. (laughs) Okay. But you were doing it. I was absolutely doing it. What were you afraid of? My brain is like, oh, well, I don't know your budget. And I don't know how many times you could come here a month. And I don't know this. And I don't know that. And then it realizes you know, after coaching and actually leaning in and going, it's none of my business. Yeah. You don't even have to solve for any of that. Absolutely. None of my business, what your budget is and how often you think you could come back. I'm going to tell you that you need to be in my office and on my table as often as you can be here. Mm, That's damn powerful, right? Because you're the expert in the room. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like it's some, like at the very beginning, like when you do feel like you're new, Mm-hmm. And everyone tells you that you're new in the system. You know, it's hard to be the expert in the room. Yeah. And I think it's like, just because we don't give ourselves permission for that. Right. So I'm yeah. always tell- telling you guys, like, no matter what your status is on the MFR directory, your right. status in the room with the person that you're treating is expert. Like of the two of you, you are the expert. And even if it's another MFR therapist, mm-hmm. like you're still the treating therapist and you are still the one making the recommendation. Yeah. You are the one with the hands on the body, like, you get to make those recommendations. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, the, the, the client is not in the foyer of the hotel getting your certificate so they know what time you got it. Like, mm-hmm. they don't need to know. They know that you should know more than them. And that's and all. And they don't care. Right. No, they really don't. They really they don't. don't. They really don't care. And some of the best therapists are those newer, like novice, beginner therapist, mm-hmm. right? I think now in my group, like I do require that people have had at least three MFR seminars under their belt because they yeah. just have better, they think differently about their skill set. And we can argue that they do have more skills than someone who's only had MFR one. Sure. And I've had a couple of people come in with just one and they do end up taking more seminars while we're together. And I think more people than ever mm-hmm. that are in my coaching program are going to T for T's are doing skill enhancement. Like even while they've just invested with me, they're investing in those things because it's, it really matters to them to be very good and very sharp in their school, in their um, skill set and their yeah. tools, like all of that. But what's interesting is the people that have only had one seminar, or maybe they've, they're thinking about becoming an MFR therapist the imposter syndrome is a real thing and it really large. Yeah. It really, it just is not (laughs) beneficial to be sitting in that while you've made this big investment into coaching. And like your only hurdle is your, is your skill set. It's like, no, just go take those classes or take them while we're in coaching and decide that you know enough to apply this to the business that you're creating, but don't go out there with one seminar under your belt and like have the I just find that fascinating too, where you like, you take one seminar and you're like, I can go and do this as a full-time job. And it's like, I mean, you you can't really, like you really do need more seminar. Like you really, like it really should be a goal that you have as many seminars as possible. Yeah. And know what you're doing. Like, that's very important. Like that should be like your 
your like quarter time job as an MFR therapist is taking seminars <laughs> and being really good at what you do and yeah. really honoring the work that John Barnes has like put out into the world. Right. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't honor him in any way or honor us as MFR therapists to be doing like a janky job at it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cause I yeah. mean, you're just, you're putting one person off who possibly needs really, really, really needs the work of MFR. Yeah. So, yeah. You yeah. need to come at it as a, at a genuine spot of this is what I can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, be the expert in the room. And that's, that was one thing I had to get over was, yeah, they don't know. They don't know. Like I took my certificates off the wall. Like you don't get to see how many certificates I have. They're in a drawer. If you want to see them, you can actually leave. But um, (laughs) (laughs) it's just, yeah, it's just having the confidence of knowing I am the expert and I'm also the business owner. Not only am I the expert, but I, this is my business. And it's serious business, right? Yeah, it is. It's not a jobby. It's not a hobby. It's not cute and adorable. You do know what you're doing. Like that's the, one of the biggest transformations like I see in you is like to go from where you were, where you were kind of like, I'm not like, I'm just not sure how to do it. And it's, you know, like a little bit timid to this sense of radical self-responsibility and just engagement with the outcomes that you were providing and the outcome you provided for yourself yeah, for continually going back and being uncomfortable and doing the work and like admitting when you've not done the work or admit, you know what I mean? Like just admitting it to yourself because nobody else cares. It it only affects you if you do it or not. (laughs) Right. Like, yeah, very true. Like tell us what doing this work has created for you in your business. Well, so in the time frame, so my, again, my 2021 was $6,500 and change. Mm -hmm. My 2022 totally was like 40,087. That's amazing. Yeah. In addition to the majority of that $40,000 started when I restarted my second round of coaching. So from (laughs) August until December. Yeah. August until December. So it was like the back half of the year when I actually decided to get out of my own way (laughs) and actually do the work deeper and harder and actually be in the space and be in my own yuck. (laughs) Yeah. Is when I actually started, I made the majority of that money in, during coaching. Mm-hmm. And you went for T for T. I went for T for T. I, I did a, a week of T for T and then backed it up with a week of SCS. <laughs> oh my gosh. So the, I just like to shout that out because a lot of coaching students are doing this while they're in coaching. And it's like, some people are going to be like, how can you invest that much money? But it's like, you invested $3,000 to work with me. Now the price is five. And you Woo-hoo. created $40,000, right? And yeah. that's just the beginning. And I want to really point that out because a lot of people get lost in the like, oh, I need to create a hundred K and I need it. And it's like, well, it starts with your first $5,000 or your first yeah. 10,000, first 15, right? And the realization that you're going to continue to make that money. Mm-hmm. Business is not linear, just like healing isn't. And it will fluctuate, right? But you are learning to become the person like, you'll probably never make less than $40,000 in your business. And you'll probably double or triple that (laughs) in 2023. You're damn straight. I will. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's the thing. Like, it's almost like when you try to lose weight and you're like, oh my God, I have to lose 80 pounds. If you just sit there and stare at that 80 pounds, oh my God, that's so much. If you go into, I have to make a hundred grand, I want to make a hundred grand. You're not ever going to get there if you don't see the $5,000 that you made last month as a reward and as something that you just kicked ass to do, right? That's something incredible because yeah. most people don't make that much money a month, especially massage therapists, right? Yeah. We have a massage therapist in our group that made $250,000 as an MFR therapist this yeah. year. Like what? Yeah. And that's absolutely possible. But yeah. Like everybody else is like, oh shit, I could do that too. Like, and and Mm -hmm. that doesn't even have to be your goal, right? A lot of people want to be like really humble and like, it's not about the money and (laughs) da, 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 da. But at the end of the day, this is a business. And so it actually needs to be about money in order to be a business. Right. So, I mean, you can be both. Why Mm -hmm. can't it be about both? It's both. It's both. It has to be about both. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Like I did Reiki. I was a Reiki master for eight years before I went to massage school to do MFR, blah, blah, blah. And my clients who were free and or getting a discount and or whatever that were on my table, I was resentful. I was. Yeah. 
because I wasn't making the money that I wanted to make. Right. Yeah. So I felt very underappreciated. Mm-hmm. And you underappreciated yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm sitting there like, why am I doing this? Like, I'm mm-hmm. a dumbass. Like, why am I not making the money that I want to make? Mm-hmm. I wish everybody would ask themselves that question. Why? Right? And this is for everybody listening. If you're in the car listening to this or whatever, <laughs> don't wreck your car. But like, don't wreck. why aren't you making the money you want to make in your MFR business right mm-hmm. now? Yeah. And where, and I want you to answer that only with you. Where are you not making the money? Because it's not anyone else's fault. It's not your yeah. client's fault. It's nope. not the amount of seminars you've taken. It's not John Barnes's fault. It's not my fault. Like it's where are you creating that result? And the minute you figure that out and get your shit mm-hmm. together is when you're going to start to make money and you're going to stop being dependent on like whether or not your clients come and like mm-hmm. you're going to start to figure out how do you create clients and become your best referral source. Yeah. And guess what? When you walk in your and when you walk in your office and you were happy to be there. Cause you're making the money that you want to make. You can pay your rent every month for the room that you rent. You can, right. Mm-hmm. You can do all of those things. Guess what? You show up so much differently for your client because you have no burden. There mm-hmm. is no cloud hanging over you of, Oh shit. How am I going to pay my rent? And then I've got this person on my table. that's only paying me such and such dollars. I'm never going to make the money that I need in order. So bump up your rates, what you actually need it to be. And then walk in the door, like a bad boss, ask, just walk in, get your shit together, walk in and know that you've got your money situation figured out and then show up for your client. Mm -hmm. Because then you've got no burdens, you've got no nothing. Then you can be the massive badass healer that you are Mm -hmm. and do the work because nothing else is burdening you. Just do the work and be there for your client, right? Yeah, that's so good. So good. So priceless because really... When we do our own work, when we clean our side of the street and we're not dependent on what the client does or says or how often they come back in order to feel good about ourselves, we get to decide ahead of time how we want to feel and how we want to show up for those clients. And when you do that work, you show up empowered and the client can't help but buy the results that you are selling because they can see your confidence and it's unstoppable and they want what you're offering, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to like, I don't know what, I I mean, like, what do you want? What's in your budget? You know, like, I'm not sure if I can get you these results. I'm so sick of people saying they can't guarantee you the result, like short of guaranteeing it. Like, what can you guarantee? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't know the answer to that, figure it out. Like take a minute. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for someone else to tell you, like Mm -hmm. figure it out for yourself. So, well, that's the other thing. Like, again, like, is it John that says, you know, you can't take a client any further than you're willing to go. And that is absolutely the truth. So if you're not willing to unwind and get dirty and get filthy and get in your muck and figure it out, no client on your table is going to do that either. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) All right. So where do you go from here? You've graduated from group coaching. What's next for Donna? Do I get a certificate in the mail? (laughs) Um, No, but I just told you here. (laughs) (laughs) It's official because it's on a podcast. That's right. Um, um, I go from here to making way more money than I did last year. Mm -hmm. I actually just went and looked at a new space to rent today that will avail me to have another room to rent to someone else. So that that would be helpful. And or I can hire someone in the future if I want to. Mm -hmm. My goal for next year is to make that hundred grand or more. Mm -hmm. So I'm good with that. And I want to net that and not bring it in gross. I want that to be my net. Okay. (laughs) I love it. So that would be like grossing like 130 or 140, I think. So I'm good with that. Yeah. Um, And I have set up my calendar and my rates to bring that in. So that's Mm -hmm. not a problem if I'm full. Yeah. Yeah. So not a problem. I'm good with I that. Love that. I love yeah. that. And I want to want you to remind yourself that like, even if it takes you 13 months or 14 months, or maybe yeah. it takes you 18 months consecutively yeah. to mm-hmm. grow that amount of money, yeah. nothing has gone wrong. And it is so atypical for massage therapists, for MFR therapists to be pulling down that kind of money that you have to stop for a minute, enjoy the journey and realize that what you are creating is something so special. And in order to have that result, you have to help a fuck ton of people get better, right? And so like you getting that result is from helping so many people to Mm -hmm. feel better and always remember that because that's Mm -hmm. why we do what we do 
Mm-hmm. And then we get this bonus result of all of this money in our bank account, which then affords us the life that we want to live outside of doing the treatment work. Yeah. Like I want to be, I want to be the MFR therapist that pulls up in a Lamborghini. Oh yeah. And I want my people to look at that and be like, oh, my MFR therapist drives a Lamborghini. Yeah. That can't just be reserved for doctors and yeah, surgeons, you right? You want the MFR therapist that drives a Lamborghini, not the one that drives a 12 year old Corolla. <laughs> right? Like we, we, we want a Lamborghini therapist. I want to be the Lamborghini therapist and I, I will be the that. Lamborghini therapist. I, I can't wait. Send me a picture. <laughs> I like that idea of that because that also shows your clients that you take really good care of yourself, right? Like, and mm-hmm. that you are enjoying your life. Like you're having fun, you're enjoying, and it's not just this like grind mm-hmm. and hustle to create enough money to eat most people are out there just grinding and hustling and being overwhelmed and getting ready to burn out because they can't figure out how to make it work. Well, and that's how that you don't have to suffer to be a healer. A lot of people feel like you have to be in this suffering way of life or, you know, that kind of thing in order to be a healer and to help someone else. Yeah. You can make the money that you want to make and still be a healer and still be there for people. And you'll actually be there for them more if you're not suffering for it. That is really, really good. So true, right? Like, and we think we're kind of groomed this way growing up. Like we're groomed that there's some sort of bonus points if you are suffering, right? Exactly, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You think you're going to get to heaven quicker if you suffer. I guess. (laughs) I don't know what it is. But it turns out like you can exercise and eat vegetables and drink all the water and you still die. (laughs) Yeah, and you can still die after running your first marathon because, yes. you know, whatever it is, but, whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So that's a goal. And then another goal is to start my own podcast hmm. because I am an energy worker um, in addition to the MFR. And I have been through my own chronic pain experience. I feel like yeah. I have a lot to bring to that world. So I'm in developing the podcast. I love it. To go through essentially my pain journey, getting out of chronic pain so that Mm -hmm. if I can help anyone understand what that's like and to find the modalities that they need, then Mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing to do. So yeah, I think that's a really good value add. And like, say you start a podcast and maybe like you have a very specific, like a limited series you want to do, or you do like I don't know, seasons or whatever. And like in this season, we're going to talk about this, blah, blah, blah. But like just having the audio available that you can send your clients to and be like, like, if you're really interested in this, like here you can go. And like, people can get to know, like, and trust you before they ever pay you money based on you taking the time to record your words and put it out there into the world and not need it to be perfect. Yeah. I think that's really cool. And that's, you know, like doing my podcast, it's definitely not perfect. I am lucky and well, I'm not even going to say I'm lucky, like very intentionally smart and brilliant that I hired a podcast editor right from the beginning when it was like more money than like any, any other expense, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. But she's now been with me this entire time and a hundred episodes in, there's so much value now out in the world that I don't have to recreate. It's just there. And it just like multiplies itself all of the yeah. time because yeah. people can listen to it whenever they want. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's it's fun. And like, when I first started this, I was like, well, am I going to run out of stuff to talk about? You know, and it's like, turns out, <laughs> no, I, I just have a lot of shower time. thoughts and I come up with lots of things to talk about. So I do that too in my car. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I leave a voicemail for myself or whatever. Mm-hmm. Smart. So, yeah. so is there anything else you want to share with people that are listening to this? The people that were like you listening to this podcast before you ever thought that you would be on the podcast? What would you say to you then? I would have said to me to lean in, Hmm. get the coaching and understand that Heather is the person who will show you to the door, but you have to walk through the door. Hmm. Yeah. So you have to absolutely be able to walk through the door and be willing to do the work and then it'll pay off. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like safe to do multiple rounds. Like it's okay. Like nothing went wrong that you came back and did more coaching. No. And I know I'll be back and I am happy to pay the five grand. I love that so much. And your clients think that about your rates too, right? Like, yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, yeah. Safe to charge what you want. Yeah. I mean, your ideal client will be like, not only am I here, but I want you to put me on every Tuesday at 6 PM until your calendar ends. Like Mm -hmm. I will be here every week. 
Like yeah. those are the kind of people you want. So you have to be those kind of people too, for other people. Like you have to be mm. that person for yourself as well. Yeah. That roots for other people. That's excited yeah. about price increases that pays for MFR, right? All these yeah. things like you embody that. I know when mm-hmm. I announced to the group that I had raised my rate by $2,000, you were like clapping and cheering and like so excited. I was. <laughs> And I like looked up and I saw that and I was like, that's amazing. Like, this is exactly (laughs) why I do what I do. And multiple people have said to me, like, Mm -hmm. when I heard the price increase, my first thought was, I'm just going to make more money because I will always Mm -hmm. want to buy this coaching because it is so valuable. And I thought, Mm -hmm. yes. And that is also available that your clients are having those thoughts about you. And it's really important to remember that, that you can't embody that clients would have that thought about you if you're not having that about other people or other things that you do and buy and invest in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, And I also, after that, after that call, I went into my husband and I was like, Heather just raised her rates and she delivered it like it was the news. I know. She just like, (laughs) that's what I do guys. That's what I do. She was on the pulpit and she just said, yeah, my rates going to be raised. So I think, you know, like everybody loses their mind over raising their rates. Yeah. Just, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to have any drama. Like you can just decide that's what you, that's literally what I did. I like decided it on like a Friday and I like told (laughs) you guys on a Tuesday, right? I got coached on it. It definitely like was a thing for me, right? But like by the time I said it out loud to you guys, like it it just wasn't, and it hasn't even been a thing, Mm -hmm. which is amazing because I have never changed my coaching rate up until that Tuesday. Oh, Really? Well, my oh, one-on-one right. was 3K. My group was 3K. Like I had, I could sell oh, 3K of coaching right. to anyone, like people that don't, aren't even in our niche, I think would buy it because yeah. I'm so good at selling it. Right. So it's like, it was just like, it just never occurred to me like, oh, yeah. you, you could just raise your rate. Cause I was like, how am I going to keep this group small? Like, what am I going to do? You know, like all these things I was like trying yeah. to solve for. I'm like, oh, here you we go. To. Yeah. I don't have to create a new offer. Yeah. It was amazing. So yeah, and I mean, I, I know I'll be back because I know at some point I'm going to be like, okay, what if when I get to that hundred grand, what if I'm going to be all weird about it? Like I'm, so I'm going to be back. I will always make yeah. enough money to have a Heather. I love that so much. <laughs> yeah. It just becomes part of your budget. Right. And like yeah. coaching isn't part of your budget until you make it part of your budget. Just like yeah. MFR is not part of your client's budgets until they know that that's an option for them to create a budget for. Exactly. You just have to show them the door again. Yeah. And people can get resourceful. Like you just have to believe that your clients are the most brilliant, resourceful human beings out there and they want what you have to offer. And when you're having that thought, it will always just be the truth. That's just like what you always say. Like how much is being in pain costing you right now? Yeah. A lot. They're just suffering and they're okay with suffering because it's been that way for so long. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the same way, like when you're suffering in your business, Like how is continuing to suffer in your business or continuing to under earn? Like how much is that actually costing you? Mm -hmm. And how much does it cost you to have thoughts about yourself? Like you can't afford to invest in coaching. Like if you can't afford to invest in coaching, something needs to be fixed in your business because you should be able to afford to do anything you want to do or need to do to protect your profit, to protect your Mm -hmm. business foundations, like all those things. It's actually just like a big symptom of something going wrong. So like- Your only job as a business owner is to figure it out. How do you stop that from continuing to happen so you can make your business awesome and enjoy it? Yeah, and that's the other thing. Like I go back to my chronic days of going into pain and people like putting myself in the client's shoes of when I would ask someone, how often do I need to come back? When they said weekly, I said, sign me up. Not Mm -hmm. a problem. I will be here. I will sell blood like, if I have to. Oh, it's up to you. Like, would you even like know to come weekly, right? Because like, it's know. just so not so obvious to everybody's brain yeah. that that's what you should do. That's how you get better faster. That's actually how you save money is coming yeah. in more frequently, closer together in the mm-hmm. beginning. So yeah. Yeah. So got to put yourself in their shoes. Yes, exactly. Say the hard things. things. Yes. Yeah. Well, you got to be uncomfortable and that's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the name of the game. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on and talking to me today. I know this is going to be just such a fun podcast to listen back. I always listen to my podcasts. (laughs) Someone was saying in group today, they're like, I can't stand listening to myself. And I was like, but what if you could, like, what if you liked it? Just do it. Lean in. It's it's uncomfortable until it's not. That's just going to be our motto. That's our motto for 2023. Just lean in. Lean Lean in. in. Yes. (laughs) All right. Tell everybody where we can find you again. It's your website. 
Uh, Trinity, MFR.com. Okay. That's Donna Height. You guys, she's located in Austin, Texas. She's also a search engine optimization expert. So <laughs> if you need any help, look her up. <laughs> Cool me. Yeah, that's going to be my other side job at some point, probably. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably be too busy treating people, but... Well, we'll see. Because yeah. I only do that four days a week, so... Okay. okay. That's my ideal schedule. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I love it. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the MFR Coaches Podcast. I'll be back again next week with more. See you then. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. My goal is to help all MFR therapists stop under earning and burning out. I have several resources available for you. Read my book, The MFR Coach's Guide to Having Your Own MFR Business, available on Amazon and at Advanced John Barnes MFR Seminars. Keep listening to the podcast. I'll always have fresh content each and every week. Join my group coaching program. Enrollment opens four times per year. We take all the information I teach and lay down the foundation for your six-figure MFR business. It's more than just raising rates, but you'll make that the hardest part. Then expand into the business owner who delivers your rate like it's just the news and who can sell MFR to anyone in any situation. I'll show you how. Get on my email list, follow me on social media at the MFR coach, and visit my website for more information on group enrollment, themfrcoach.com. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next week.